Morning, friend. I'm Pastor Jamie, lead pastor here at Faith. We are committed to life transformation, loving God, loving others, and loving our community. And so we love, lift, and launch people into purpose. We strive to help, encourage, support those in our church and in our community. We are so glad you've joined us today. Our prayer for you is that this service blesses and encourages you. Speaking of prayer, we're here for you. If you would like someone to pray for you at any time in the service, just leave a comment or call the number provided and one of the pastors will reach out. Also, feel free to join us encouraging and praying for one another. Connect and comment, reach out. If you're joining us for the first time, then please comment below. We'd love to welcome you personally. Have a great morning, everyone.
Good morning, Faith Well, and thank you so much for joining us online. We're excited to worship with you, and we're going to get into that in just a moment. So before I do, I just want to mention, if you need prayer for anything at any time during the service, please don't hesitate to, uh, to call in to the number that you'll see on the screen at some point. Let's get into it. Let's praise Jesus. Sing to our Lord Jesus. Yeah, Lord Jesus. 
sing this out. Let's just welcome him into our atmosphere, whether we're at home or us here. Jesus is in us and he's all around us and he wants to come and move. Yeah, Jesus, pour out your spirit. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare your living hope. Your presence I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence
your presence, Lord, oh Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, yes, Jesus, pour out your spirit.
the name of Jesus. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Jesus said, in my name, what you ask for, I will do. The, the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father, sent by Jesus. Jesus is a powerful name. And today is Pentecost Sunday, and Jesus has sent his Spirit, his Holy Spirit. And we, as followers of Christ, get to enjoy that relationship. We get to enjoy the presence of God working through the Holy Spirit in our lives. We call on the name of Jesus because the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus. The Holy Spirit empowers. The Holy Spirit brings courage. The Holy Spirit moves in powerful and mighty, mighty ways. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. The Holy Spirit is the counselor. The Holy Spirit is our advocate and our helper. The Holy Spirit brings life. The Holy Spirit guides. The Holy Spirit directs. The Holy Spirit it walks with us and testifies about Jesus. We worship by the Spirit. The Spirit gives life and the Spirit hovered over the waters in Genesis chapter 1. The Holy Spirit is creative. The Holy Spirit is God. This morning, we want the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to you. To reveal Jesus to the world around you. And because of Pentecost, the Spirit was poured out on the church. So just under 2,000 years, we have celebrated what God did on the day of Pentecost as we get to walk that out as a community of people who follow Jesus. Now, whether or not you're a Christian and you are watching this live stream right now, I want to tell you something. The Holy Spirit is present with you. If you're looking around and all you see is destruction, the Holy Spirit creates. If you're in need and distress, the Holy Spirit comforts. If you, uh, if you are hurting, the Holy Spirit heals. The Holy Spirit gives love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. The Holy Spirit is active in the lives of Christians. And He's active in our lives before we start following Jesus as well, testifying about Jesus. If you're looking around and you need some Holy Spirit movement in your life, we want to pray with you this moment. We want to pray that you would meet where God, or that God would meet you right where you are. In John chapter chapter 15, Jesus says, it's better for you that I go because then the Holy Spirit will be with you. So this morning, this room has history. Has history with where God is. But God is in your room. He is in your family. He is in your house. He is in your neighborhood. He is in your community and he is with your friends. So if you have a prayer request, we're going to pray together as a community of followers of Christ. Put a prayer request in the comment section. Call the phone number that will be on the screen. You can call immediately after the service as well and we will pray with you. But we're going to pray right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you sent your son. I thank you that you sent Jesus. His name is powerful and mighty. Jesus, I thank you that you sent the Holy Spirit to move in each one of our lives. God, we, we may be separated geographically, but we are community and knit together spiritually. So Father, for every part of this body, I just ask that you would move so powerfully even right now right in their homes, that they would know and experience your presence, that you would meet their needs, that you would open doors, that you would empower them to meet needs for others as well. God, thank you for being a God who is near and a God who is continually drawing near and moving in our hearts and lives. We worship you this morning in Jesus' name. If you agree with that, would you just say amen? We have some announcements for you. And uh, we just invite you to keep your attention.
with us and trust that the service has been a blessing to you so far. We encourage you to make this an interactive time this morning and post your comments below. At any time during the service, you can call the church office for prayer. Pastors are standing by to receive your call. Following the service today, we have our junior high class starting live at 1.30 p.m. David Boyd is teaching today and you won't want to miss it. See you after the service. If you have everyday questions regarding life and faith, then the Alpha Course is what you're looking for. Contact Pastor Dave for more information at dave at faithwellen.com. The Alpha Program currently runs Wednesdays from 1 to 2 p.m. The first online session of Growth Track will be starting the evening of Tuesday, June the 16th. Growth Track is where you will learn more about Faith Welland, our vision, our leadership structure, and how and where you can get involved. Contact Pastor Dave at faithwelland.com for more information. That's it for this week's announcements. Enjoy the rest of the service and you make yourself a good week. All systems are good. We are Faith Welland, honoring our legacy and where we've been. Looking ahead with anticipation to our future. Led by vision, fueled by purpose. So how are we going to get there? Being committed to God, others, and our community. We want to be like Jesus. Accepting people as they are. And serving them to meet their needs. We will love. Creating a clear path for people to experience, discover, and serve God. We are committed to life transformation as we help, encourage, support, and train those in our community. We will lift. Showing our love for God and each other by the way we live. We will release transformed people into the world to love and serve. We will launch. We will launch. We will launch. We will launch. We value experiencing God, so we will follow His direction. We value the Bible, so we will hold tightly to the message. We value people, so we will function like a family. We value growth, so we will create a clear path for people to discover God. We value generosity, so we will be giving. We value the next generation, so we will invest in the future. We are Faith Welland. Ready for the next part of our journey ready to do this together. We will love. We will lift. We will watch. Good morning, Faith Welland. It is so good to be worshiping with you today. We are completing our vision series for 2020, Love, Lift, and Launch today, by focusing on launch. And then we'll be starting after next Sunday is another God Story Sunday. And then in June, we'll be beginning our series, Doors. A great series as we go through the scripture, focusing on references that have to do with Doors, opening of doors, closing of doors. It's going to be a great, great series. Ironically, our doors are closed. March 15th was the first Sunday. That's a while ago. Here we are, last Sunday in May, and still the doors are closed on a Sunday morning. But we want you to know we are preparing for when you are able to join us. We've been working hard. We've given the full church a scrub down We've actually added a whole bunch of new sanitization stations. We uh, just recently have have purchased some some no-touch taps for the the washrooms. We've we've, uh, actually gone through how to to do seating here in the sanctuary in a way that still will respect physical distancing. 
As well, we've been looking at flow, our entrances, where people would come in, where they would leave, and how they would move through the building, all in preparation of when we'd be able to join here again. Right now, we're not able to meet in more than groups of five, and it doesn't look like there's going to be any lift of the physical distance requiring for some time. The large groups and meeting in large groups are considered to be the highest of risks, and Singing is in there with the high-risk activity. So when we do get together, it is going to look very, very different. Now, I know there's a, a lot, going to be a lot of new information. It's going to look so different that we want to make sure that you will be informed. Nothing really is, well, it's going to be strange, but you're going to be prepared as much as possible. We'll put out lots of communication through social media, through email. We'll make phone calls. We'll also do a, a we're planning a, a walk through, as if you will, a virtual tour of what can you can expect when you, when you do come. I know that there is some provision that has, has been made available for drive-in services. We've been looking into that. The nature of our parking lot makes it difficult for us to utilize this. But I want you to know that we, the staff and the board, we've been prayerfully considering when we will get back and when the board feels like it's, it's uh, safe and, and we can minister effectively here at 380 in the building, then uh, we will let you know. Now, at the, until that happens, we want you to know, though, that uh, we've been prayerfully considering God's guidance and not only the way things are right now, but, but prayerfully asking him to guide us of how we can prepare. Just because we're allowed to do something doesn't mean it's the right thing to do or it's the right time to do it as soon as you are able to. The Bible says in Proverbs, desire without knowledge is good. How much more will hasty feet miss the way? We want to get here as much as you do, but we need to be, be careful and be considerate with our decisions to make sure it's the right time when we do open up. We may be hindered from attending here, but we are not hindered from being a church. This is a great opportunity for us. This is a great opportunity for you to reach out into your community, to reach out into Welland, to Font Hill, to the Niagara region, and God wants to use you. That's why I'm excited about this message today. You do not need to be hindered in serving Jesus. We can still stay on mission, love, lift, and launch. It's the power of everyone. I'm going to ask you a question. If, if, if we had to cancel a, a, a celebration, let's say a Christmas or, or Easter or, or Good Friday, we, we had to as a church say, we have to cancel one of these celebrations. Which celebration do you think we should cancel. Okay. So that's not a very fun discussion. I mean, we have a hard time imagining what it would be like without Christmas or Easter or celebrating on those occasions. We have such a great reason to celebrate at Christmas that God would come from heaven down to earth. God with us, Emmanuel. And Easter, a Good Friday, that, that Christ would be obedient to the cross. Also, we have access to the Father. And then the celebration of, of Easter Sunday, the, the resurrection, the life, the transformation, of course we would celebrate. But there is another celebration that unfortunately the church has, many churches, for many years has ignored, has put off, has silenced. And that is the celebration of Pentecost. At Christmas we celebrate that God came to us. At Easter, with the cross, we can celebrate God in us. And at Pentecost, we celebrate God through us. It's the birthday of the church. 
the purest meaning of Pentecost. It's a time of renewal, of revival, of beginning, of empowerment, of evangelism. These are all things that we could celebrate today. There is a, a woman I want to quote a couple times today, Cheryl Bridges John. She said this, if you celebrate Pentecost this coming Sunday as only an event where an individual is filled with the Spirit, you're missing the whole meaning. Pentecost is not just about me or you, it's about everything. As a staff, we've been going through the book of Acts and our devotions at our staff meetings. And it's been such a rich experience. To, to read and discuss and share and just observe what the Holy Spirit's been doing, what's God been doing through ordinary and everyday people. It's a great, great exercise. I encourage you to do it. In fact, if you start tomorrow, because tomorrow is the first, if you start tomorrow, you can do a chapter every day and by the last Sunday of this month, you will have completed the book of Acts. Be a great exercise. Take the time to, to pray and to thank God for the Holy Spirit, to observe how God works not only in, but through everyday people. We're going to dig in a little bit today on, on this Pentecost Sunday, this early church. In the Old Testament, the Feast of Pentecost, or the First Fruits, or the Feast of Weeks, was a a time of celebrating the harvest. In the New Testament, it concept picked up on that, and, and we celebrate a harvest of people coming to faith and belief in Jesus Christ. The de early days of Christ's ministry, the likelihood, and all the way through to the last days of his ministry, the likelihood of his disciples carrying on his mission after he was gone was not high. That was until, of course, Pentecost. They were huddled in a room behind a locked door, shutters on the windows, no doubt, and then the sound of a mighty rushing wind, the fire over each one of them, the languages that they have never spoken before. And what they were saying was, was understood by strangers they were speaking in, in other languages, languages strangers could understand. It was a miracle. The miracle wasn't just all these manifestations, is that God was communicating to a world in their own language. The work of the church began that day. The church began to be an agent of reconciliation. The amazing thing is the 3,000 people that were added to the church that day, the miracle that happened that day happened after Jesus had left. It would be inconceivable to the New Testament disciple that this would be possible without Jesus being present. Pentecost calls us away from being spectators to being central characters in God's redemptive plan. On Pentecost, everything changes. Jesus passes us the baton. Pentecost is a day where God decided in his infinite wisdom, and it wouldn't be likely a move that you and I would make, but he decided that the world would be evangelized not by the singular ministry of Jesus Christ, but instead by the anointed and empowered ministry of every individual who would call on the name of Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and would follow him. I'd like you to have a little bit of discussion again. Think about an event in your life where you observed somebody, you watched them doing something, and then after you watched them doing it, you were thrust into an opportunity to do it yourself without anybody's help.
things aren't always as easy as they look. I remember for me, it was a time when I was a young man, I felt like I could probably take on anything. I had been working construction with a group of of guys that were laying blocks, building foundations. They were so good and so fast. I had been a, a laborer for a long time, slinging mud. I watched them over and over. They made it look so easy. I remember the time when one job was, was particularly slow and we had a little bit of time. I kind of pushed myself in there and said, I want to try it. Can I try? With a grin, and I think I ended up uh, being the comedy of the day, they gave me an opportunity. I started to try to lay a few blocks in a row. When I got to the corner, it wasn't straight. It wasn't right. Finally, one of the guys stepped in and fixed everything that I had done. It wasn't easy. I thought I could do better than I did. I thought I had the ability, the skills by just watching. There was another thing doing. Jesus was passing a baton. The time of following Jesus as a discipler, as an observer, as as a learner, that was over. These groups, this group of followers were being thrown into carrying the message and the mission of Jesus Christ. Acts 1 and 6 says this. They gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? You see, this was during, after Jesus had rose from the dead and he was was ministering in his resurrection ministry. And this was just before he was going to ascend into heaven. And the disciples who were used to observing him doing things, who were used to following him, used to watching, they thought maybe he was going to do something again. But they got it wrong. He was not going to do something They were about to do something great. He was there to equip them. They were thinking about the future. They were looking to the future. He was wanting them to look into the present. That he was going to equip them now. He said this, John chapter 15. When the counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who goes out from the Father will testify about me. Now, you might think there, perfect. The Holy Spirit's going to testify? Excellent. Let him do it. He'll do a great job. But he goes on in verse 27. And you also must testify. For you have been with me from the beginning. Brother, sister, the Holy Spirit can speak. God still does speak. But still, you must speak. There is a work for you to do. This is not something you defer to God or a servant of God or a pastor or a Sunday school teacher. This is for every follower of Jesus Christ. You must testify. As a result of Pentecost, we do not watch someone else doing something for God. We are not just observers watching a pastor or an evangelist or a a hero of the faith or our parents or our grandparents. Because of Pentecost, we are actively involved in the great mission of reaching out and spreading the great news about Jesus Christ. Every single one of us who put our faith in him as our Lord and Savior. In the Old Testament, the Spirit would come on a few individuals for a specific task, for a specific time. In the New Testament, in Acts chapter 2, comes on all people, all backgrounds, all gender, all status, all age, for all who would call him Lord and Savior. You have an anointing. You have a task to do that has been been set apart for you by God, and you've got a specific anointing to achieve that task. You were created and equipped and shaped by spiritual gifts, by a heart for something, with abilities, with a personality, with life experience. You have a shape to prepare you for what God's called you for. But in addition to that shape, you have been equipped and been given a gift of the Holy Spirit. 
significant that Jesus told the disciples, these ones that followed him for years, they were trained, they were taught, they were observed, but it was not enough just to go through the classes. They needed to wait for the promise of the Spirit before starting ministry. Being launched can be intimidating. It can be a scary thing. And so the disciples needed some encouragement. Well, that's the great thing. The Holy Spirit is a counselor, is a comforter. He is a companion. His presence has always been with his people. There's a misconception that in the Old Testament there was God. And then in the Gospels there was Jesus. And then in Acts, there was the Holy Spirit. The reality is, the Spirit of God has been present all along. From creation to now through to eternity. The same Holy Spirit that breathed life into Adam and Eve is present with you today, right where you are. The same Holy Spirit that called Noah and called Abraham calls you. It's the same Holy Spirit that empowered Samson and that rested on Samuel and Saul and King David can rest on you today as you serve him. It's the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead that dwells in you. It's the same Spirit that came and ministered to Elijah when he was weary after conquering the prophets of Baal. The same Spirit that came and ministered to him is the Spirit that ministers to you today. Do you find yourself needing comfort? The comforter has come. That is something to celebrate today. We need the Holy Spirit. Jesus encouraged his disciples in John chapter 14. When he was leaving, he was predicting that. He said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another Savior. The Holy Spirit of truth who will be to you a friend just like me. And he will never leave you. He will make his home in you and live inside you. At Pentecost, we not only celebrate the presence of the comforter, but we also celebrate the courage, the boldness that the Holy Spirit gives us. These Pentecostal believers were filled with courage. Throughout God's word, we hear the phrase, be strong and of good courage because I am with you. The spirit of God gave courage to Joshua and to Caleb when they went into the land. Same spirit gave courage to Peter and the apostles in the book of Acts. Another time for discussion. Can you describe a time when the Holy Spirit gave you courage to step out or be obedient to him. Or maybe there is something that you know you need to do, but you need the courage to do it for him. If we had been there with the disciples, there in the upper room, I believe we would have seen individuals not just waiting, but I believe there was some apprehension, some uncertainty, maybe even some confusion. Their pattern up until this point had been one of fear, not courage. He told them to wait for power, for boldness, for anointing. And once the boldness came, they would be ready to go. Then, on the day of Pentecost, the rushing mighty wind, the fire again, the languages that they'd not learned, and and Peter, Peter of all people, the guy that denied Jesus three times, he stands up on this makeshift pulpit and he starts preaching to a bunch of strangers that were looking down and kind of mocking them, and he stands up with boldness and he declares truth. 
speaks of the prophet Joel. Before Pentecost, they were fearful. They were huddling in a, in a locked room. They were denying Jesus. After Pentecost, this frightened group were launched into kingdom purpose. The difference was night and day, suddenly equipped and empowered to carry on the ministry that Jesus had begun. The boldness, the power, the courage all came to life. The believers waiting up in the upper room received a gift that would equip them for God's work. It is a gift that needs to be received, to be taken in. It was not their salvation. He said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. But we had already before this, in the book of John, chapter 20, he had already commanded them to receive the Spirit. So why again? Well, one is about conversion. The other one's about provision. In John chapter 20, he said, and with that he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And then he tells them, you need to wait until you receive. One is about conversion, about God coming to them and in them. The other is about the Holy Spirit working through them. Power wasn't just to tingle them, to make them feel good. It was, it was the power to be a witness, to come alongside, to transform their abilities, their experiences, the time following Jesus was not enough. We need the Holy Spirit to do what we're called to do. Do you remember Adam? He was created by God miraculously, but he was just a shell and a body until in Genesis chapter 2 and 7, the Spirit is breathed into his nostrils. Then there was life. Or Ezekiel in chapter 37. And we're going to sing today in the service a song, Rattle. Ezekiel 37, a vision where Ezekiel speaks to the bones and they started to form structure. And they, they were there all brought together in a, in a structure. But there was no life until the Spirit of God blew over the bones. Life. Pneuma is the word in the Greek for spirit. Pneuma. The same thing is true with the church. No matter the spiritual gifts, the structure, the building, this stuff, this, this is not the life at all. We can come back here and open the doors, but if there is not a readiness to be obedient and to receive from the Holy Spirit, there will be no life. The good news is that life is available. It's not in a certain place. It's not only here. It's available right there where you are. As you open up and receive from God, as you ask him to come, Holy Spirit, in my life, Holy Spirit, have your way. Father, help me to fulfill the mission of Christ on this earth. Every race, every ethnic group was gathered there that day. There was a celebration of the Passover, and the Jews had spread all over the world. And, and, and these Jews would come home to celebrate the Passover at this time. There were people there from Africa and Asia and Persia and Europe, the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, all present there at one time. God was doing a couple of things by this, I believe. He's, he's got perfect timing. Number one, he was, he was reaching people who would take the message back to their own nations all around the world. But secondly, and important to us today, he was establishing the church that consisted of and welcomed every race and region of the world. I know many people have been talking about this and it's all over social media. But I was shocked and grieved as I watched the images of George Floyd's death this week. You no doubt have seen it. I am sure that God hates the racism and segregation that still grips our society. And we might say, well, that's in the U.S., but there is still 
The same prejudice here in our nation, unfortunately. Christianity Today wrote an article that I agree with. It says in the article that the work of the church will not be complete until itself reflects the multicultural and multi-ethnic diversity of God. 1 John 4.20 says it this way. If anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. You see, I'd like to say that, that this division is, is only in the, in the world, but it has also found its way within people's lives that would attend church normally. Now, the diversity I'm talking about is not just a white people or black people or race or ethnicity. Diversity, I believe, that we need to establish is, is also social class, economic class, educational, political points of view. We're instructed by James in chapter 2 to not show favoritism to anyone. But we are a society that's becoming more and more polarized. We have a taste for, for building walls, for taking sides, for enlisting people to our side and attacking those that don't believe what we believe. Creating mobs, cliques of angst, attacking and becoming increasingly harsh with our tones. It's in the church too. It's a dangerous trend. And it's not right. Pentecost came to all flesh, to people of all nations, and was declared in many languages. Don't miss that today. It was God's plan to bring all cultures together. Our broken, divided culture needs a Pentecost today. We need to come together. Pentecost is the day when the walls came down. Peter said in his, in his message in verse 28, God will pour out his spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and even the men servants and the maid servants. In those days, I will pour out my spirit. Pentecost is the day when, when walls of division are torn down in the community, and in the church. To move beyond the idea that, that God only works through and in certain people that come from certain families or certain race or of a, are, are only men and not for women. I know I'm stepping on toes here, but Paul says it in Galatians, in Christ there is neither male or female, not slave or free, not Jew or Gentile. We need to embrace unity. We need to embrace the together aspect of Pentecost. There is no Acts 2-4 without Acts 2-1. They were all in one accord. Pentecostal movement started over 100 years ago, and it was started in a racially charged area of Los Angeles, United States of America, by a son of a slave. In Canada, it was started in Toronto through a woman called Ellen Hebden. Their motto, when people experience the love of the Holy Spirit, their bigotry will be changed to love. We cannot walk forward in the mission of Acts and neglect the spirit of the mission. We must cooperate with one another and we obviously must cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Now, the events of that Acts chapter 2 account and the church being launched out were, were unprecedented and I'll even dare say strange. The wind, the fire, the languages, but it drew a crowd that were inquiring, investigating. Now at first, 
Those in the upper room were misunderstood, were maligned. People thought they were drunk. These are the events that launched the church. God works in mysterious ways. Peter spoke to those people who were misunderstanding. He said, repent and turn to God. Each one of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus and the anointed one to have your sins removed. Then you may take hold of the gift of the Holy Spirit. And listen to this, church. For God's promise of the Holy Spirit is for you and your families for those yet to be born, and for everyone whom the Lord calls to himself. That day, 3,000 people believed. From 120 in the upper room to 3,120. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the wind, the fire, the languages, the prophecy, the miracles, the salvations, the birthing of so many churches. When God moves, it's often unpredictable. And people often have a hard time processing it. We've been so focused on the mission of Acts. But somehow, many have forgotten the spirit of the mission of Acts. If you've been holding out today, holding back, if it's been a long time since you've shared your faith with someone, or a long time since you stepped out in faith for Jesus, it's been a long time since you've walked in obedience and in step with the Spirit of God, then today is your day. I pray that as we conclude this service in a few moments, and the worship team plays as Pumi reads a scripture, I pray the Spirit of God would quicken inside of you, would start to shake you up, move you free from where you are. It's where life begins. When the Spirit was blown over those bones in that valley, what was just dry bones began to live again. Finally, the Holy Spirit keeps us on track. The purpose of this Holy Spirit was to equip the church, but not only to empower them, but then also to keep them on track. It was the rails. He guides us into truth, it says in John chapter 16. And in, in Galatians chapter 5, he, if we keep in step with him and walk by him, we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. He will guide us away from things that pull us away from God. He guides us into purpose. When, when Jesus was establishing his mission and declaring the reason why he came in Luke chapter 4, he said, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach. He has sent me. The Holy Spirit will guide us into the will of God. If, if you have a decision, uh, if you have a consideration, the Holy Spirit can, can show you the way that's right says in Psalm 143, teach me to do your will for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Today is Pentecost Sunday. We celebrate. We celebrate that the comforter has come. We celebrate that we can have courage. The Holy Spirit convinces of us of the way that's right. That he, he coordinates ministry, works in partnership with us as we serve the Father. Don't be a spectator. Let's do this together. God is making you into something great. There is something for each and every one for you to do. And especially now, in this season, even though we can't gather here, you might say, well, I'm not a prophet or a teacher or a leader. I'll say, well, you left out things like servant or giving or encouraging or showing mercy. You might say, well, I'm physically not able to do the things I used to be able to do. I would say, but you're still able to courage, to support. You're still able to pray. Why would we do this? Well, because changing lives is saving lives. And saving lives is changing families. And changing families is changing communities. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. Because God has got great plans for you. God has got great plans for your home. God has got great plans for this church and for this community. But as 
Zechariah said, it's not by might, not by power, but by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of God. Will you come and will you join me in welcoming the Holy Spirit today? We, we are separated geographically, but we can be together on this. Together, open up our hearts and invite the Holy Spirit to come in a fresh new way, to bring a new Pentecost. Would you join me? Can we together as a church be unified in the desire to see the Spirit of God continue the mission of Christ in and through us? As Pumi reads right after I pray, and as the team leads, would you open up your heart to the Holy Spirit today? Join me as we pray. Generous Father, we come to you today. We come to you because the work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross. And we together are united in the fact that we need a Savior, but also united in the desire to serve you to fulfill the will of the Father. We unite together in prayer for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Like it was said for all people, every son, daughter, old and young, we say do it again. All of us, every nation, every age. Heavenly Father, we repent for being complacent or being stagnant or lazy in our faith. Direct us and how we might move, how we might live, how we might worship, how we might serve, and how we might love. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would open doors. As we are out for our walks, as we are in our community, that you will show us opportunities to expand your kingdom. We say, come, Holy Spirit. Heal us. Heal our land. Fill us. Empower us. And guide us, Heavenly Father. We pray that this world might turn to you in a remarkable way in this season, in the middle of this pandemic. Breathe on us, Holy Spirit. Transform, sweep over us with life. In Jesus' name, amen. The Valley of Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of dry bones. He led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you. You will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to them, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says Come, breathe from the four wings and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet. A vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope 
is gone and we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open up your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back into the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open up your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. And I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. Surely
Christ Jesus. So good to be together on this Pentecost Sunday. Say this with us. Let's all say it together. We are faith welland. We will love. We will lift. We will launch. Amen. Have a blessed day.